In this video, we're going to start looking at the topic of vectors and more specifically, displacement vectors. Vectors can be given in 2 or 3D form. In 2D form, we represent vectors with a directed line segment using I and J notation. In 3D form, we have I, J and K. The majority of our work in this module will deal with vectors in 3D form. So let's start with what we call a position vector in 2D form. A position vector is given relative to a fixed origin O. So let's draw up now a standard set of Cartesian axes. So we've got our x, y plane. So what we've got here is the x and then we will have y. So we've got x and we've got y. So this now is the origin and we could show a position vector. So if I just now put a position vector, that's coming from now the origin. We show a vector now with a small arrow like so. This is going to be a. Now this point right here, we could say the position vector is going to be OA and the notation we use is capital O, capital A and we could write this now as A. Now in a book this will be bolded or if you want you can underline it. So this now is a position vector relative to the origin. Remember from previous studies, vectors have both magnitude and direction. So let's look at this now. We've got the x and the y axis. Let's say this point now was 2, 1. We could show this now as OA is going to be in column form. We could say 2, 1. So this is telling me to go across 2 and up 1. Alternatively, we can use I and J notation and write this as 2I plus 1J. These are simply unit vectors in the direction of x for i and the direction of y for j. So relative to a fixed origin, this now is a position vector. We've got a, we've got now oa, and we've expressed this in two different forms. I generally prefer working with the column form, but sometimes you'll have to work with i and j notation. OK, let's now look at this in 3D form, and we will look now at a position vector in 3D form. What we have in 3D form are now three mutually perpendicular axes and I'll just draw them up like so. So what we've got and we, we can go out with this one it's often quite hard to see what's actually going on with this but hopefully you'll get some understanding. The orientation of these will change depending on the book that you read but often what we'll have now let's just put this here we'll have the x-axis the y-axis and then now this perpendicular axis called the z-axis. So what we've got here now are mutually perpendicular axes. So we can see all of these are perpendicular. Now a position vector in 3D form, let's grab one of these up, will start again from the origin. This can come up here. Just imagine this as the corner of your room and now you're just lifting a piece of string anywhere from here. You can see we can go negative with this vector too. So what I'm going to do now is just represent this as a position vector. So what we've got is a position vector. So we've got now x, y and z. So this is now lifting off the floor. Imagine that you could stand under this on a floor. So what we could say now is that this is going to be a position vector and we could show that now as a or we could say now that this is OA. You can see here that we've got i and j. They correspond to x and y. In the 3D form, we can say now that OA, and I'll just give this some values, we can say that OA, with this point being A, could be given either now in column form, and we could say, for example, 2, 1, 3. So it tells me X is 2, Y is 1, and Z is 3. Or we could write in now the I, J, and K notation, OA is equal to 2I plus J plus k. So these are what we call position vectors and they are relative to a fixed origin. These are three mutually perpendicular axes. So that's the first thing that we need to know, position vectors. We're now going to look at direction vectors. So what I'm going to do here is just pick two points. This could be in 2 space which is 2D or 3 space which is 3D. And we're going to have the point now A. And I'll put A just here we'll have the point B just here. So this is going to be A and this is going to be B. These now are two position vectors. We're interested now in the direction vector. 
Now, if I put this up, we can represent this with a line segment. And because it's a vector, it needs to have both direction and magnitude. Magnitude is the size, quite clearly direction is now the direction it's going in. So let's say that this, for example, in free space, 3D, is going to be 2, 1, and let's go for minus 1. So this is now the position vector. If we now look at the position vector B, and we could say that this was minus 3, minus, uh, let's go for minus 2 and 4. So not massively accurate, but we can just simply show this. So what we could say then is this is a vector, and we could say that this is going to be the vector A. Now, we want the direction vector, so the direction vector considers these two. The position vector considers the origin, the direction vector considers these two. And we write a direction vector as a b with the arrow on. And that now is going to be b minus a. So we can write this as b minus a, or if you like, if you're representing these now as um, simply now position vectors, in general we could say b minus a, where these are both position vectors. So let's have a look at AB here. AB, now subtracting away, what we're going to have is B minus A. So minus 3 minus 2. So that's going to give me now minus 5. So let's write that there. Then we've got minus 2 minus 1, which is minus 3. And then finally we've got 4 minus minus 1, which is 5. So this now is a direction vector between these two points. As we can see, this now is vector AB. Quite clearly, if we were going the opposite direction, we would have now minus AB. So what we could say now is the following. We could say minus AB is equal to BA. And that is a property that you will come on to. And that goes back to these having both magnitude and direction. So there we go. That is a direction vector. So position vector relative to the origin, direction vector between these two points. OK, let's go on and look at now the magnitude of the modulus of a vector. We can denote this now, and if we go, in fact, we'll go back to this one. We can say, and the notation we use is AB, so this is a vector AB, and this now is the modulus of a magnitude. This is now the length of this line. And essentially all we're doing is using Pythagoras. So in this particular case, we would have 3D Pythagoras. So we would say it's the square root now of minus 5 squared plus minus 3 squared plus 5 squared. So what's that going to give me? Root of 59 in total. So we can say that the modulus, the absolute value, or we could say now the magnitude of this ve uh, vector is going to be root 59 units. So if that was now in 2D form, if we look back at the other one, for example now, you'd simply use Pythagoras. We can say now that the modulus, and we'll write it here, the modulus or the magnitude of that vector OA is going to be now the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared which is going to give us now root 5. So that's finding now the length of a vector. In later videos, we'll look at angles between vectors and certain properties, but for now, you need to know that this is the magnitude, and you will hear it being uh, stated as the magnitude, or now the modulus. And it's simply using 3D or 2D Pythagoras theorem. We're now going to look at what we call unit vectors. In the first example, I introduced the idea that i and j were simply unit vectors. Now, often unit vectors are shown as a hat. So they have a little hat, and that's a unit vector. So in a 2D form, if we had a unit vector in the x direction or i direction, it would simply be 1, 0. A unit vector has magnitude, or its modulus is 1. So this now is in the i direction. So if I was at a fixed origin, and we'll draw this out, what we'd have now, a unit vector in the i direction from the origin would simply take me to this point right here. So that's one unit. If I wanted now one in the j direction, we would have 0, 1. And that would take me just there. Quite clearly in 3D form, if we had one in the x direction or i direction, 
we'd have one, zero, zero. If we had one in the J direction, zero, one, zero, or the Y direction, and then in the K or Z, zero, zero, one. Now, these are simply unit vectors. We could go ahead and find now that a unit vector in the direction AB. So, this now is a direction vector, and we could find a unit vector, so a vector of length 1 now that is parallel to this line. So when you hear now a direction vector, it simply means some multiple of this, um, and it's going to be parallel. All we have to do to, uh, to find that is simply write now that the modulus, now let's in fact, let's write a hat. So a hat is going to be equal to a over the modulus of a. Now that looks a bit uh, daunting. It's simply saying that a unit vector in this direction would be 1 over root 59 multiplied by minus 5 minus 3, 5. And of course you could write those as fractions. But we're simply now dividing through by the modulus of it. So that now is a unit vector. So, so far in our work, we've looked at position vectors, which are vectors now with respect to the origin. So a fixed origin, they're in rel uh, so they're relative to a fixed origin. We've looked at them in 2D. So OA is A, and we can see that that now can be written in column form or I and J notation. We've seen the position vector OA in 3D can be written in column form or I, J and K notation. We've looked at the modulus of the magnitude or the length of this directed line segment as simply now Pythagoras in 2 or 3D. OK, then we've looked at uh, now a unit vector in the direction of a given, uh, a given vector. So we've seen that we can do that like so. So let's move on now and we'll study some more basics of vectors. What we're now going to look at is a scalar. Now, a scalar only has magnitude. A vector has both magnitude and direction. A scalar is simply now a multiple. So let's say I've got now some vector, and I say in 2D form, we've got A, and that's given to be now, let's say, 1, 2. Let's say now we've got B, and B is given to be 4, 8. So I'm writing these now in column form. What we can say here is B will be equal to 4a. Now, in general, when we're dealing with scalar multiples, we use either lambda, which is the sign here, or mu, or t, if we're dealing with time. So a scalar will simply now be a multiple. So what we can see now is if we drew this out, let's just draw this out, these two vectors are parallel, b is just four times its length. So let's say that this is going to be, and let's make this look slightly more realistic, uh, let's do that with it. So this is going to be now the vector A, so we've got 1, 2, so we've gone across 1, up 2. This now is in the same direction, it's just got a magnitude now of 4 times the size. So these would be parallel, and it would look something like that. So we can represent now these uh, scalar multiples generally using lambda, mu, or t. t, more with your mechanics with time, these more with your core maths. So what we've got then, if we say that this is going to be a, this is going to be now 4a. We've just scaled that up by a factor of 4, and it is a parallel vector. So it's important to understand that a scalar has no direction. It simply has magnitude. We're now going to look at what we call a resultant vector. If we consider from our early example, we added vectors. So let's take three vectors. And A, let's put these in column form and do 3D. So we'll have, let's say that A is 1, 3, 5. So, of course, we could write this as A is equal to I plus 3J plus 5K. If we say now that B is going to be equal to, let's go for 6 minus 1, 2. So we could say now that B was going to be equal to 6i minus j plus 2k. Uh, let's say we got C as well, and we would have now minus 1, we'd have 2, and we'd have minus 1. So we could write now that C is equal to minus i 
plus 2j and then we'd have minus k. So if we wanted then a plus b, all we would have now is a resultant vector. We'd simply add these two together. So we could say now that a plus b would be equal to, we would have now the 1, and this is why I prefer column form, 1 plus 6. We would then have now 3 plus the minus 1, and we would have down at the bottom, with our k component, we would have 5 plus 2. Therefore, we could say now that a plus b, when I've added those two vectors tip to tail, we would have now a plus b is going to be equal to 7, then we'd have 2, and then we'd have 7. So that's basic now addition of vectors. So when you come across this, it's something that you will simply need to do. You just need to add them. So if we wanted to do now, let's say we um, wanted the resultant vector and we wanted AC. Now AC could be given as AB now plus AC. So let's just look at that side, plus BC. Let's just write BC in there. So AB plus BC is going to give us AC. And if we think about this now, this should make absolute sense. So AC is going to be AB plus B to C. So let's consider now the following. AC is C minus A. So what we'd have then is the following. We'd have minus 1 minus 1, which is minus 2. We would have now the following. We'd have 2 minus 3. So remember, AC is C minus A. I'm simply subtracting these. So that's going to be minus 5. And then we'd have minus 1 and minus 5, which is minus 6. If we look at AB, that's going to be B minus A. So that's going to give me 5. We're going to have minus 4, and then we're going to have now minus 3. So AB is B minus A, and then we would add to this now BC. That's C minus B. So that's going to be minus 7. I've done minus 1, minus 6. 2 minus minus 1, which is going to give me now on here. Let's just do that one. So that's going to give me CB. 2 minus minus 1, which will give me now, uh, what's that in total? Uh, 2 minus minus 1 is 4. Three. Okay, so let's put that in. And then finally, we'll have minus 1, minus 2. So that's going to give me minus 3. So let's have a look at that. Um, just need to check that. That doesn't look all that right. Okay, uh, that's the one that I've done wrong. I've done the one just here. So AC is going to be 2 minus 3, which is minus 1. So let's just change it over. That's why it wasn't looking right. Let's just change that. There's the slight error. You can see now that that stacks up. So we've got minus 2 here, which is correct. We've got now minus 1 and then minus 3, and minus 3 is minus 6. So just be careful. Hopefully you can see now that um, that is an easy, easy slip up to make. So that now is basic, that's resultant vectors. A resultant vector now, AB plus BC is going to give us AC, and we're simply now using the addition of vectors. Subtraction, pretty much the same as you can imagine, and in later videos we will look at that. So there we go. That's some basic work with vectors now. So just to uh, clarify what we've looked at, we've looked at position vector relative to the origin in 2 and 3D. Then we've gone on to look at the modulus of the magnitude of a vector. That is now the length of a directed line segment. We've looked at the notation. We've looked at unit vectors in each direction. We've looked at finding the unit direction in the vector uh, of any vector. In this particular case, we had the direction vector AB. We've seen this direction vector AB is simply B minus A. We've gone on to look at scalar multiples. And then finally, with my poor addition just here or subtraction, we've seen what a resultant vector is. So hopefully that will give you enough information to start looking at some basic work with vectors.